So my wife brings home this movie last night, The Greatest Showman, a musical. And uh, wow, if this isn't one of the most polarizing movies of the last five years. I mean, people are just on two minds of this thing. I remember when it came out, it came out around Christmas time, and I remember, you know, casually glancing through the reviews at it, getting the idea. Generally panned. Reviewers pretty much hate it. Critics say it's a piece of junk. And I read some of the reviews again last night. Um, watched, watched What the Flick. That's like an offshoot of the Young Turks. They do movie reviews. I watch them on YouTube. I watch their taken. They hate it. They're panning it. They say it's absolute garbage. Ultimately, they wound up giving it a five, which isn't absolutely terrible. But they're talking about it like it's, you know, a complete turkey of a film. Don't waste your time. It's absolutely terrible. Okay, so I've written this movie off in my mind. Well, one day, I'm, one night, I'm at dinner. Uh, we go out to dinner every once in a while with these friends of ours, and this Danish couple I know is praising it to high heaven. Oh my gosh, you have to see The Greatest Showman. It's wonderful. It's stupendous. It's, it's just such a fantastic musical. I'm like, what on earth movie are these people talking about? The Greatest Showman? This, this junky movie about P.T. Barnum? So I'm curious. I look it up on Wikipedia, come to find out it is the fifth best-selling movie musical of all time. Just, yeah, wrap your brain around that one. $500 million at the box office. $500 million at the box office. That's like, you know, a middling superhero movie. So I'm curious. I start watching the movie. You got two schools on this thing. For the most part, the critics absolutely hate it. But my wife heard, other than that night, a lot of really positive reviews about it. people. For some reason, it's people really taking it to heart. There's a, there's a fan base for this film. So my curiosity is peaked. I start watching it. I got to tell you, it's a strange thing, but I kind of side with the people who, while I don't necessarily love it, I'm not telling you it's wonderful, I kind of side with the pros, with the people who say it's really good. And for the life of me, I'm not sure if I can explain fully why. I get why the critics hate it. When you listen to the What the Flick review on it, they talk about the music in it. Um, and there, this is kind of correct. About It's got this American Idol style of, you know, over-emotive, never get enough, never be enough. You know, it's got that, like... Go for the big notes, do the runs, in your face kind of overly emotional style of singing. Now, the, the first word that's going to pop in your mind is cheesy. But I'm kind of a fan of American Idol too, for the exact same reason that I guess American Idol is also deeply polarizing. I see why people call it cheesy. I see why people go, oh, it's so lame, it's so tacky. That's part of the reason why I love the show. Cause so lame, so tacky. You have so much fun with it, you know. I've once I've described it as going to watch Walmart live. It's like watching a real slice of Americana. So I get the comparison, and the music in it, it's schmaltzy and overblown. Yes, but kind of satisfying. The same way American Idol can be. It's kind of hits that sweet spot of like, it's so it's. it's I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's kind of like cheese whiz. It hits you right in that center that you just gobble it up and you enjoy it. I, I, I really kind of like this film. Actually, I mean, I was, I was engaged from the moment it starts. The first number, I was like, oh my God, this is going to be terrible. This is going to be absolutely terrible. I can't believe my wife brought this home. I'm so annoyed with her. But then once the first number ends and you, you're going into the plot, uh, it's more or less a standard biopic of P.T. Barnum. I'm sure they take thousands of liberties with his actual life. Hugh Jackman is playing P.T. Barnum. Now, Hugh Jackman, you'll know from the Wolverine films, Hugh Jackman is an excellent actor, and he's actually really good in musicals. He also starred in Les Mis. He was really good in that. Um, he has a lot of training in it, and it shows. There's a lot of really spirited performances in the film. Everybody who's in it is, to one degree or another, like captivating. But it's propelled by its own, it's kind of very similar to American Idol. It's it's, it barrels along to its own thing. 
it's it's weird that's probably why it's polarizing it takes place in the late 1800s mostly in New York City but the music does strike you as very very contemporary and not necessarily in a good way if if <laughs> If, if the idea of big American Idol style numbers in a, in a movie from the, you know, that's supposed to be 1890s Manhattan strikes you as something that's going to really get on your nerves, this movie's probably going to really get on your nerves. But I really got a kick out of it. I got to say, I'm with the people who liked it. I kind of was, I was kind of on board for the whole ride and kind of had fun with it. So, you know, I'm a big fan of movies that, that, deliver the goods on the level at which they that they don't overshoot their mark that they that this is a piece of confection it's a musical that's it only makes sense on its terms it's a light-hearted you know that makes the pleas for racial tolerance he he starts a freak show and that's what actually propels pt barnum into the circus starts out as a freak show so there's all these underlying pleas for you know social progress and how we should all be more tolerant towards one another. You know, all the stuff you'd expect from a typical, you know, musical, Hollywood-style musical. And yes, the, if, if, if you're cynical about these type of things, you're going to hate it with every fiber of your being. You're going to hate it with every fiber of your being. Normally, I kind of would. I'm not necessarily a fan of musicals. But for some reason, this little piece of confection struck me right in the sweet spot. And I'm a really big fan of movies that, that hit you right in the right in the zone that they're going for. You know, they don't overshoot their mark, they don't, out, they don't outdo themselves, they just serve up exactly what they are and they know what they are and they serve it to you. And I, I really had a good time with this. I really enjoyed it. Not necessarily saying you go out and see it because you probably come back and say, oh my God, I can't believe you, <laughs> I can't believe you totally watched that piece of garbage. And I hate that movie. <laughs> if it's the type of thing you're gonna hate, you're gonna hate it with every, every ounce of your being. You're gonna passionately detest it. Like the what the what the flick people, they they can't stand it. Same reason people hate American Idol, I guess. You know, I'm just cynical. You know, can't have fun with something cheesy and just for fun. But I really kind of got a kick out of the movie. I I really had a good time with it, and I'm in favor of the people. Not necessarily that it's wonderful. There's no way you could call this wonderful or. It's right within this. It's right within the realm of satisfying piece of entertainment. Um, I kind of even like the songs. The song uh, "Never Enough" is really pretty decent. And then there's one famous song that comes out of the movie called "This Is Me," uh, charted briefly. I think Kesha even does a version of it. Um, it's. It's polarizing for sure. If La La Land was polarizing, and La La Land is somewhat similar to this, but it's a much higher brow, higher quality version of the same thing. If you hated La La Land, you're going to hate this with every fiber of your being. You're going to hate this. You're going to so hate this you can't even you you'll you you know you'll hate me for even liking it. <laughs> you'll, you'll passionately detest every minute of it. But. If you kind of get a kick out of cheesy American Idol style numbers and those big emotive like Never get enough Never get enough Those big like You know, let me try and sound like Whitney Houston right now type numbers You know, do a couple of runs If you get a kick out of that type of thing And you can, you can appreciate something on the level at which it presents itself Without being too cynical about it, you'll like it. I did. I got a, I got a real kick at it. I had fun with it. So there you go. That's all on that. I'm in.